Welcome ladies and gentlemen, this is Tim Down for Living With MS in Tenerife. Today we're in the Toby Jug and I'm talking with Rick Bayer again. Uh, Rick has been on his travels, a couple of islands tours and he's uh, done a bit of filming. And we're meeting up today for an informal chat and a little bit of a drink. I'm having on the water and lime, so it's like a Tim and Tonic but with water. And um, I might have one beer before I go. Yeah, I think you should. I think I should, yeah. <laughs> that's looking pretty good, haven't That's all right. I mean, I didn't know, actually, didn't know they did John Smith's here, so we had it the other day. So it's relatively weak. It's a good um, good starter, isn't it? Uh-huh. Rather than having some lager all the time. So how the devil are you, anyway? Fine, thanks. Yeah, I um, I went to Lanzarote, as you probably know, mm -hmm. on January 8th. Stayed there for a week. And then... Um, and then we went to Puerto Ventura, and that's when I last appeared on the show. Uh -huh. And uh, I only, only just had, had arrived then, that mm -hmm. day, so I said I'll give you some feedback on Puerto Ventura. Uh -huh. So I'll give you some of that in a minute. But, okay, um, cool. And then we, and then I stayed there for a bit longer, and then one, and I flew to the North Airport um, last Friday. It's on Tenerife North. That's right. And then yeah. You, and then you... my friends picked me up. Okay. En route, and we went to Puerto, mm -hmm. Puerto de la Cruz. It's absolutely superb place for it to like cruise. Mm. I've, I've been on about it before, but so what we was stayed the weather there. like last year, uh, last time, last week? Well, it, it, it was fine. I mean, yeah. it was a little bit cool certain evenings, but it's the same sort of conditions that are actually here in, yeah. in the south. Yeah, we enough. had a we had a massive Kalima around yeah. it. Um, maybe since maybe since a week now. Yeah, it's supposed yeah. to finish yesterday, but I still see there's remnants of it somewhere. Oh, definitely. I mean, this this Kalima has actually been going on. I think it was. I think it was January the 14th it started. Yeah. That's when we went to mm -hmm. Puerto Ventura. And it was just ridiculous for three or four days. It was just raining. And then, what, well, it rained for a bit. And then just obviously very dusty and all the rest of it. And, and that clima is still, as you said, it's still here in yeah. Puerto. You couldn't see the hills. You couldn't see the Otava Valley. You couldn't see Tide. No. And on certain days it clears. But it's still lingering, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, anyway, so we have we came here. About two days ago, just for three. And how long are you staying for? Just three days, and then we're going to Lagomera on, on tomorrow morning. Well, like, tomorrow? tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, for, for three days, yeah. Oh, wow. Because we love Valley Grand Ray so much. Uh-huh. I mean, the, the guys like the Spanish sort of places. Uh -huh. So that's why Puerto and Valley Grand Ray, they like this to an extent, uh -huh. but they like to move on. So uh, so we're going there for three days, and then um, come back for one day, and then fly home. OK. Yeah. So you just be coming back for two? Because you can't fly from Lagomera. That's right, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. 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 We're staying in San Juan, actually. Okay. Yeah, for one night. So. Have you got a villa or something? Or you well, just an apartment. Another apartment, apartment okay. Booked, yeah. And do you get all those on uh, Airbnb, or how, how do you get those? Yeah, generally Airbnb. Yeah. Um, occasionally, I, I, I do I book stuff on Booking.com. Okay. I've had some really good stuff. I mean, for example, in Lanzarote, I had an apartment booked on, um, you know, Verbo. They used to be holiday rentals. Yeah, I don't know. And, it, but, and the no. chat, the chat, Cancelled with the you know with a week to go for, for some reason, and uh, then I looked on Booking.com and I found this place in Playa Blanca where we were staying. I tell you what, it was absolutely fantastic. It was Diamond Resorts, uh -huh. Sol, uh, Jardin Sol. Mm -hmm. I couldn't be I couldn't believe it. It was actually like a five-star hotel. These apartments. Mm -hmm. So we had a two-bedroom apartment, and I tell you, it, it was brand new, mm -hmm. so spacious, everything provided like you'd get in a five-star hotel. You know, all the tea, coffee, washing up liquid. It had the recycling bins all laid out. Everything, shower gel, etc., etc. You name it, mm -hmm. everything was there. Top Wi-Fi. And, and and they had a, obviously a swimming pool in the middle and, and people wanted to eat, they could do. Couldn't fault it, 100 euros a night. Was it a breakfast buffet or did you have to get your own breakfast? No, I mean, we, we did the same catering, but I, I, I just, I was amazed how spacious and clean and modern mm -hmm. and you know it's quality it was for that price <laughs> you know if four people could stay for 100 euros a night in, a, in effectively five-star accommodation wow yeah it, it was sort of a diamond diamond resort uh-huh yeah they, if they, we they, get they, the link the i'll stick it in the description yeah, very okay. good i gave them obviously a very good review yeah so what was your um, what's your plans for uh, the channel i'm just getting more footage. So, um, I've cut, obviously I've captured everything for Puerto Ventura. Uh -huh. It's just a matter of doing some video. I've put two up already on the channel, mm -hmm. Puerto Ventura. One of the beach, some beaches mm -hmm. in the south, and the interior. Mm -hmm. The interior is absolutely fantastic. So I've done a four-minute vi video mm -hmm. for the viewers mm -hmm. for you to show them.
Yeah, that, that's, that's got clips that are actually not on, on the channel at the moment because okay. I haven't actually put them together. Exclusive by Living Exclusive, With Emerson Exclusive, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I found, as I said to you before, I hadn't been to Lanzarote or Fuerteventura Ventura because I thought they might be, they're, they're a bit barren and I like these Western Islands. But having been there, I like both islands actually. Mm -hmm. they, they, they're just, all the Canary Islands are unique in their own way. They offer something for somebody. And um, Puerto Ventura, although it's, it's, it's like a desert, generally it's a desert-like landscape. It's, it's more akin to North Africa mm -hmm. than the Sahara, with, with undulating hills and mountains in the interior. Obviously, everybody knows about its you know, tremendous beaches, mm -hmm. but it's got hundreds of kilometers of beautiful coastline of golden sand beaches. Absolutely, you know, and, and it's a surface paradise, and for you know for su sunbathers. But the interior is actually really nice. Um, it um, he has an, has some interesting villages, towns, and uh, I, I found it really really interesting. And uh, I think the, uh, the the summary video that I did probably give you a little taste of what you're actually missing by not going there. Okay. Okay. And um, uh, what about wheelchair friendliness? One of the resorts, I think, are, are, yeah, they all are because mm -hmm. it's not it's not elevated like uh, mm -hmm. Tenerife, so you don't really have to go a lot of steps or you know it's pretty flat. All the resorts are on on the coast, and yeah, it's pretty flat, and it, I don't think it's a big issue. Tenerife is a, is a problem, a problem on it. Yeah, I mean it's a, it's an old yeah. resort, so but they are they are redoing these, so actually the new the newest portions of the resort and yeah. every time they upgrade something they're really doing it very well in fact yeah. our village Kaya Savaki they have now dropped all the curbs by all the zebra crossings right. yeah. because I think two years ago they came the council came and we went down in a wheelchair and they said right let's go over from the square to Casa Maria which was one crossing and I said Christina now has to go to the other side of the road cross the road go up to the roundabout cross the road yeah. there and come back down and so, so they went, oh, and yeah, I mean, a couple of months later, there were workers were there and they were doing everything, so that was pretty cool. Yeah, was pretty cool. yeah. And the only thing about, I suppose, uh, places like Puerto Ventura is that it's, it's spread out. It's quite desolate, most places, there's not much, not many people live. So you, you, you got, uh, essentially, you get a wilderness in the middle uh -huh. with the odd dotted village and town. And the coastline, you've got essentially you've got Morro Harbour in the south. Mm -hmm. You've got the Costa Calma area, and, and that's a sort of southern bit where it's slightly warmer and less windy. Yep. And then you've got the area around the airport, Calete de Fuste, and Puerto de Rosario is the capital. And then you've got Coraleco, where a lot of British people go mm -hmm. in the north, where the dunes are, and that's shown on the on the video. So essentially, you've got three areas: the you know the north center and the south mm -hmm. on the east side and i think this and i sort of was wondering about you know people will say it's windy mm -hmm. well they are just named you know strong wind but a lot of it's to do with the fact that it's not in, it's not intrinsically windy compared to say tenerife mm -hmm. not it's, like el medano for instance yeah it it, it, it it appears windy because all the resorts are on the east coast all right that's the reason because you look at the, the east coast of tenerife you go from medano north it's windy. Mm -hmm. Medano is very windy. Mm -hmm. And that's what you got. If all the resorts were in Medano and north of Medano, everybody would say Tenerife's windy. Right, okay. You know, if Los Cristianos and this area was there, everybody would say, well, Tenerife's windy. Mm -hmm. And then they say the same thing about Puerto Ventura. Although it's intrinsically slightly, probably slightly more windy, mm -hmm. I, think it's, I think it's more to do with the fact that the locations are all on the east coast and the same in, in Lanzarote. Most of the resorts on the east coast Whereas the West Coast is uninhabitable because it's, you know, there's a range of mountains effectively that make it uninhabitable. And you get that with Grand Canaria as well. Yep. There's very little uh, space on the West side. The East side is very windy in Grand Canaria. Mm -hmm. You see Mas Palamas is in the South right. and you get Puerto Rico, etc. That's really the reason. Intrinsically, there can't really be much windy on the, the East Coast cannot be any windier because there's nothing stopping it coming from the sea. Right. Because you've got northeasterly trade winds coming in. Obviously, the other side is different because the elevation shelters it and all the rest. Sure. Of it. So it's obviously more complicated than that. So I know I don't. You don't like to sort of like put one against the other. But uh, where would you, which island would you say was your favourite up to now? 
I still like the West of the Islands because yeah. they are, I mean, Tenerife is the most diverse island. Mm -hmm. Definitely, it's a continental diversity. Yeah. You know, you've got, you've got obviously the, the, set, uh, the national park, which, you know, it's like moonscape, etc. And then you've got this arid area here in Costa Deje. But then you've got the Northwest, you've got the Otava Valley and Puerto de la Cruz, which is absolutely fantastic. It's beautiful, it's tropical, absolutely is tropical. In fact, that was the first, in fact, I was telling people that Puerto de la Cruz was the first um, tourist area in the whole Canary Islands in right. terms of tourism. Right. So it, it sort of started in the 1890s that on the hill in Puerto, there's, I think, it, it, watch, I'll have a look at my, one of my videos on Puerto de la Cruz. It's quite popular actually, that one. On the hill, there's a grand hotel, and it's at the moment it's derelict, and they're, and they're probably trying to do it up. And you, it's, it's a majestic view from the south. Anyway, in the 1890s, you had privileged British going there. So these are botanists, climatologists, and they're the only sort of people who, could, who would travel. All right, I get the Christie. Yeah, they're the sort of people that you see in Poirot yeah, okay. would, would have been there, yeah? So My little grey cells. Yeah, <laughs> they went there because they were fascinated by A, the climate yeah. and the fact that there were so many tropical plants and all the rest of it. Mm -hmm. So they settled up on that hill and they built an Anglican church. And that was built in the 1890s, wow. early 1900s. Now in a Catholic country, that's quite unusual. And it was built by donations from other tourists. So in the 1930s, okay. other Europeans started coming, privileged Europeans started coming and they built the Grand Hotel. I don't know exactly when it was built. It might be in the 30s or 50s. And that's when sort of mass tourism, if you like, uh -huh. started. Well, mass, but privilege type tourism started. And it started in Puerto de la Cruz. Cool. Because not in the beaches, but on the hill. Because it was a different kind of tourism, though. They, didn't, they weren't interested in sunbathing. Mm -hmm. They were just interested in the other, 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 other topics. And then obviously after that, when, when Tenerife took, you know, took off in the late 60s and early 70s, and then you had mass tourism here because they built the the South Airport. The resort. I suppose, you know, in 1980, I think, 1980 after the yeah. 74 disaster. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's a sort of a history of really Hooperton, but it's, it's, but it's very, very green, very tropical. And that area, I love that area of, of Tenerife. We haven't really done a lot of uh, travelling because Christina doesn't like to travel. Yeah, she can't yeah. see very well, so taking her in a car up mountain roads is like shaking her in a black box, she says. Yeah, so we don't do that, but if you do come over to the island, don't forget, there were more than sun, sea, sand and sangria. There's lots more to do here, isn't there? Oh, definitely. Um, in fact, the yeah. Canary Green um, group and also the the councils of on the island, they're trying to get a more sustainable, more green tourism and also to push the local culture as well so instead of coming over here and just bringing britain with you you know yeah. your, your fish and chips and stuff and your john smith beer although that's good and it's a great home from home and they're trying now to say hey you know there is a culture of the canary islands as well that you can that you can look at and uh, and hopefully we get a bit better employment opportunities for our locals because most of the kids have to leave because they the only jobs they get are five dollar an hour serving in, in in tourist areas so it's not sustainable for anybody who's got a bit of an intelligence um, they have to leave so there's a whole gen couple of generations that are working abroad from the canary islands but i'll, I'll, uh, I'll show you a clip yeah maybe afterwards or no. but if you could put not a clip sorry a, a picture mm -hmm. an image right and it's relevant to what i just said earlier well we'll just show it now can you show it? Well, I mean, I'll, yeah, yeah, I'll yeah, let it in. Yeah, yeah you, you, you put it in. It, it's essentially, <laughs> it's our car parked in a, in a small country lane. And, and I ask people, where do you think it is? Forget the number plate. Mm -hmm. And they'll just say England. And it, I'm not joking. Yeah. Tell me if it doesn't look like England. Yeah. And this is in Tenerife. Yeah. You just would not picture it that's in Tenerife. <laughs> Honestly, it looks like a country lane in England. Honestly, I won't say any more, but just put it up oh. and see what the viewers think. They're watching it right, right? now. And that's basically, it's right near where the tunnel's coming out, the other side of the Airhoss. Okay. Because I went up there to oh. do some uh, filming. Okay. And we went, I had to go on a country lane and we stopped there. <laughs> that's why I filmed it. So I'm, I'm doing a video on that, on the Airhoss tunnel that links the, um, the ring road in Tenerife. Uh -huh. Yeah. Which is going to be finished soon, hopefully. We've only yeah. got 23 kilometres to go. Yeah. 
the new impressive. tunnel has gone through. Mm, it's very impressive. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is Tim Down for Leave Me There Mission Tenerife with Rick, Rick, Rick Bahir right here. <laughs> and uh, thanks for the discussion again. It's Fantastic. very interesting as always. I'm um, showing you some of the um, footage that I've got from that on Freaky Friday, but I'll tack it on the end of this one as well. And uh, so you can have a look at that. Yeah. And uh, don't forget to nip over to Rick's channel and uh, there's a link in the description and give him some love like subscribe and as Shelly and Rick say share so <laughs> thanks very much thank you <laughs> nice to see you again anyway see you guys